Welcome to the Fancy Think of Jared Quarter Mansion. Today we're going to be doing Reading the Prose number 15 to start off this new year. And we're going to be looking at Jenny Wirtz's Grand Conspiracy, the uh, fifth book in the Wars of Light and Shadow, and second book in the Alliance of Light uh, arc. Um, and we're going to just take a look at the first paragraph and how it sets up setting and tone and how it relates to how she set it up in the last book as well. Um, with, but there's going to be very mild spoilers here, nothing to worry about um, in that sense. Uh, so, taking a look right at the prose. Um, the hard frost came to the downs of Arathura early, and the rains at their cusp laced crust of ice through the peat stacks under the sheds. Indoors, with no fire lit to fend off Audvin's breezes, the invasive cold settled at will. Crouched on her knees on the packed earthen floor beside her darkened cottage hearthstone, the Coriani enchantress Alera cast aside her flint striker. She cupped her chilled fingers, blew on the cot spark. Well versed in the contrary nature of wet peat, she launched into strings of ridiculous endearments, coaxing damp fodder to nourish its struggling wisp of caught flame. So, uh, that little uh, beautiful piece of prose there um, tells us quite a few things. We have, we have uh, quite a few um, references to uh, frost, cold, and... and uh, ice because we get the hard frost that came down early so it's something that um you know it's it's something that you don't want yet it's uh it's hard it's not something that's that uh it would be welcome and we got the um uh you know we got crust of ice on these peat stacks uh, under the shed and peat is what you know people used to burn to make fires and stuff like that um and to cook with maybe um there was no fire lit to fend off autumn's breezes, and so the invasive cold settled. So we have all these references to cold that's that's hard, that's invasive. Uh, so it's very it's very unwelcome. And so um, we have, uh, you know, she's also have, uh, you know, we have her trying to light. We have Alara trying to counter this. So she's on the floor. She's, you know, her hearthstone is dark. The, 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 uh, in, in the, uh, she's, she's, uh, casting aside her flint striker. She's, she's cupping her chilled fingers, you know, and blowing on the little spark that she finally caught. Now, here we are also reminded that um, she is an enchantress. She is a member of the Coriani Order, and that's important. Uh, but to continue on with the um, with the fighting off the cold, uh, we have her. You know, she's in this setting. She's she's fighting off this cold, and she's coaxing this damp fodder to nourish it like a flame. So she's fighting against these elements as they are unwelcome and they're coming in and they're approaching her position early. Um, and so that, you know, that is all conveyed with, with, uh, with excellent precision and use of, uh, use of language here. Um, so the, the, the things that remind us uh, about Alara here that she is an enchantress, so she is coaxing this um, this this uh, this fire into life, and so she has some ability here. There's a, there's a hint of magic here in this very first paragraph, and we are reminded uh, that she is a Coriani enchantress for a reason that is later to come in in this chapter. And it's very important because um, you'll find out that there's 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 a lot to being a Coriani enchantress than uh, than just uh, being able to you know coax some peat into burning, um, and so that was a very important reminder that that was in there, and it's also 
Um, it also gives us a little foreshadowing into the unwelcome presence of somebody else coming along later. And that's, I, that, I couldn't stress that enough because the one who comes along later is considered a cold, hard person. And so the, you know, what you would say, a frosty person. <laughs> and so this, these references to the cold and the harshness and the, uh, and the uh, unwelcome invasiveness of it all is a direct metaphor for the person that she's about to encounter. And so that is how where it sets the mood of this first chapter and this first encounter right off the bat through the prose in this paragraph. Um, and I would also just like to mention real quick that this is setting is like actually quite similar to um, how the first novel begins. The, not the first novel, I'm sorry. How volume four, The Fugitive Prince, also starts with Alara in a cold setting. And so I like the correlation of how Fugitive Prince started to how um, Grand Conspiracy started. And, uh, and I think that was done on purpose. I think it's, it uh, once again gives us the beginnings of the epic nature of what's going on here. And so I like how that was done as well. I also like how we get a little hint of how the environment is interacted with in this novel. Um, she is uh, recognizing that wet peat itself is contrary in nature uh, because it doesn't want to burn, first of all. But also there's a little more to it there because she's coaxing this damp fodder to nourish its struggling wisp of caught flame. And so, and but mainly it's strings of ridiculous endearments that caught my eye there because she's um she's talking to it she's she's uh treating it like a um uh, a living thing that she has to make work for her and that also echoes events that relate that happen pretty soon within the book um that uh you know I'm only on chapter 3 here but they happen pretty soon in the book and that is once again foreshadowed in this very first paragraph that there is something about coaxing nature into either helping you or or at least uh coaxing it into not hurting you maybe uh so that those hints are right in this first paragraph so once again Janie Wirtz in her prose here is telling us so much and a lot more than what you see on the page if you read deeply into it. And so I just wanted to point that out for reading the prose number 15 and just how wonderful that this, uh, this start was for me and uh, made me want to read on. All right. So that's it for today. Um, please like and subscribe below if you like this. And please be good to each other. Thank you.